I'm going back to bedside. Yes, you heard that right. I am going to go back to being a bedside nurse after 10 years away from the bedside. Maybe it's been 12 years. Anyhow, stick around to find out why and what I mean by that. No, I'm not going back full time, but you know what? I'm gonna pick up here and there. And there's a lot of different reasons why. So stick around to find out. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Lisa Chapel. I'm a doctor of nursing practice, an associate professor of nursing, and studying to have my board certification as a health and wellness nurse coach. I make videos for nurses, students, and caregivers on how to become more empowered and resilient. So I've had this kind of pull recently, I guess you could say, and I feel like in nursing, here's what happens. Go to nursing school. There, it's a competitive environment. We're trying to succeed. You're trying to get the best clinical spots and then you're trying to get the best jobs when you graduate. And kind of throughout nursing school, you get a sense that the, the best areas in nursing or the ones that are have the most prestige are those jobs that are the most intense, those jobs that are the biggest rush of adrenaline, like the intensive care unit and like the emergency department. And that's kind of, I don't know if it's subtle or if it's outright or that's just what you hear that a lot of the students say they want to go into those areas. Then when you're looking for a job, then maybe you're steered in the direction of med search because you're told, you know, you should get some experience first. And for me, I was just looking for a job. I didn't even I didn't even know if I knew what I wanted. I just wanted a new graduate job. And I think that was right for me at the at that time was just looking to get something. I what I did want was a place that was missions driven. And I wanted a place where I could get a good, a good experience and develop clinical skills. And then what I really wanted, I think, is some mentorship and some help because I didn't really quite feel ready to just take it all on right out of school. So I was looking for a place with a really good new graduate program. And that's what I found out of nursing school. And I'm not sure I could say that I was super happy as a bedside nurse. In fact, I have a video about why I left bedside nursing. And I still maintain that those reasons are why I don't want to be a full-time bedside nurse. That, that that's just not where my passions lie. But then what happens is you're told or steered in the direction because maybe everyone else is doing or, or, or this is what you hear is, okay, you go back to school and you get a higher degree. And so that's what I did, like a good steward of the profession, that I went back to school within two years. I did the dance where you can get the reimbursement and or you take a slower route. These are things that nurses can do. I am happy ultimately that I went back and got a higher education, but I struggled because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I wanted to be an educator or to be a nurse practitioner because those kind of were the two routes that were available to me at that time. And right up until the point where I had to make a decision, I still struggled with that. And I kind of even settled, I think, for education because I didn't, still didn't really know what I wanted. It hasn't hurt me to have a master's in nursing education. It's gotten me more experiences, if anything, and it's allowed, it's opened up avenues to be an educator out of School of Nursing, which is awesome. These are all awesome opportunities for me. And even going back and getting my doctorate, I, I don't even know. <laughs> with that one, I went back because I needed some help with being a magnet program director. So that's kind of why I went back and got my DNP. Do I regret that? No, I don't think so. It was at that time in my life, it definitely took a huge amount of energy to finish up that DNP, but I don't regret having a doctorate degree. You can't regret that. But in nursing, there's all these hierarchies, many different kinds of hierarchies, whether it's a hierarchy within the hospital, or it's a hierarchy in nursing leadership, or it's a hierarchy in academia and education. There's always hierarchies. 
And I don't know that that's unique to nursing. I don't, I don't think it is. But sometimes we feel trapped by those hierarchies. And I want you to realize that you don't have to feel trapped by that. And so here's what I'm doing now. I have my full-time teaching but it has a lot of flexibility and i've talked about this before why becoming a nurse faculty can really help you have a lot of flexibility and i'm pursuing starting a business with my nurse coaching so that's awesome as well to be able to have that variety and that freedom what i wanted was even more i guess flexibility and even more freedom as well as not putting all my eggs in one basket. And so here's what I've decided to do. I have decided to take a PRN position. And I have to tell you that this was the easiest interview I've ever had in my life. I just, I just had the interview today, actually. I didn't have to battle for anything. I got everything I asked for right up front. I got the pay that I asked for. Normally, I don't know, you go in and you're kind of nervous, you have to negotiate, you kind of feel like, oh, I want this job. I've never had a, an easier time getting a job in all of my life. I felt that I'm needed, no matter how I am. That's how I felt. And I know nurses are needed right now, hugely, pretty much everywhere, and that you can get a job anywhere very easily. I know nurses are leaving the profession, they're leaving bedside, and so nurses are very much needed right now. And that is something I think that you have to negotiate with yourself to figure out what's going to work for you. And I completely understand wanting to leave and feeling burnt out or even just needing a break away because I hope eventually it has to get better in terms of the pandemic. We It, it has to get better at some point in time. It's been long it's been hard um, on everyone I think but you know eventually we will figure this out and things will settle down and you know we'll be more prepared for these things happening in the future so you have to I guess figure out what's going to work for you because healthcare is always needed and nurses are always needed and I feel very fortunate to have this skill set as a registered nurse, to have been able to flex my career as I needed to, which I did need to get a bit away from bedside, and I did. I went back to school, I got my master's, I got my doctorate, I applied for some of these higher level positions. I did magnet, I did leadership, I have been a faculty now and teaching. But I am so thankful that if everything fell away and I wasn't able to do any of that, that I have this RN license that I can harness when I need it. It is always there when I need it. And I have to tell you, um, this is going to be very nice income. Very nice. I'm really super thankful for that, that I could pick up two shifts per month. That's all I could do. I told um, the hiring manager, who is a sweetheart, that this is all I could do. I would love to help out. I would love to pick up. Here's the pay I'm looking for. I'm looking for a PRN pay on top of this. And I'm looking to only pick up two shifts per month. And so we'll see how this goes. I'm not going to internally take on anything that I really feel is unsafe, that I can't manage, but I see this little facility is doing a good job. And it is a, it's a subacute, or um, they also have post-acute, and it's a little bit of rehabilitation. They do respite care. For the population, that's my specialty. So my specialty is traumatic spinal cord injury and that's what this little facility does. It isn't a top-notch hospital. It's very much a small subacute facility, but it's right by my house and I feel I feel optimistic about it. I feel cautiously optimistic. I think it's a, going to be a great way to dust off my skills. And I hear you all over YouTube that nurses are feel fearful that you're gonna lose your skills. So I'll let you know, I've been away for 10 years. I do teach some skills in the lab, so I feel like I've gotten this 
extra knowledge about because when you teach something that that's what what really helps to seal the knowledge for you but it's been a while since i have touched a patient clinically and had that responsibility under my license so i'm going to get an orientation and we're doing it kind of an orientation where I get the typical orientation and then if I feel like I need more, that I can ask for more. It's going to be interesting and I'm going to let you know. I'll take you along for the ride and tell you, am I keeping up my skills? Is it almost impossible to get them back? Am I so rusty that I'm just irrelevant? I guess we're going to find out. Making a difference again in a meaningful way, but not to the point where it owns my life but where I get to choose, I get to be in control. I'm in the driver's seat. I decide when I work. I decide how. I guess the control there is once I get there, you know, I'm not gonna be able to control the staffing levels. I will have to do my best with the resources that are available to me. I know it can be overwhelming and I know I'm gonna be running my butt off. I know that. I am a different person than I was when I first started as a nurse 18 years ago. And I'm a different person than I was 10 years ago even. So it's gonna be interesting. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here and kind of blah, dump on what I'm thinking and what I'm doing. I'm excited about it. I've been so, I guess you could say, a little bit resentful that I took a big pay cut to be a faculty and that there aren't many opportunities for growth or for increase in pay. If I pick up a class, it's not a good deal, quite honestly. It's not worth my time that much uh, to pick up a class. It's not a good way to bring in extra income. But hey, this PRN gig is a good way to bring in some really nice income. And so, I would challenge you to think about that. Instead of feeling like you regret becoming a nurse, look at it that you always have this amazing opportunity in your back pocket. So how you use it is up to you. Don't be owned by it, but flip it around. These are your skills. This is what you bring to the table. This is what you have to offer, and it is of value. And so do what you need to do to take care of yourself and take a break if you need it, get away if you need it, but always realize it's there for you when you need it. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please like, uh, click that subscribe button below as I do release new videos every Wednesday. Take care, have an amazing day, week, month, year, and I will see you in the next video.